Welcome back, people, to part two of Armchair Fucker Back. Now, we need to continue the story in which I started. In this tale of Armchair Fucker Back, we have to get into the origin of Armchair Fucker Back. Why I gave this man said name. He told me that one day when he was home alone... I told y'all why I listened to what he had to say because I found it very interesting. He told me that one day he was alone. As, and as you do, he got horny. Now, when I'm home alone, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like getting my groove on. You know, go in the bathroom, light some candles, turn some boys to men. Not, let's be honest, that's not how a, a normal person does it. You, you just go, you get some Lotion, coconut oil, wh- whatever you need. Sunscreen, lotion. Me, I'm a proper gentleman. I use Astro Glide like a real man because a little bit goes a long way. You pull up, you find the scene, you go, you look like a gremlin in a corner like a fucking gorilla. I, I don't, that's normal. You know, you lock the door. Maybe, you know, you're in a danger, you don't lock the door. Well, armchair fucker back thing was, he looked over at that couch, at the armchair, and he saw the nice curvature, he saw the, the slit, and his first idea was, I am gonna go. I'm gonna that shit. Now, this wasn't his personal couch. He doesn't live alone. This was the same couch that his mother was going to sit on. That his father was going to, 20 minutes, go and take a seat on with his jizz sitting in the middle. And so, he told me in graphic detail how he fucked said couch. Now, I don't know what kind of couch he has, but my couch, about all you can really lose in there is a um, quarter. You can lose some change, you know. Unless it's the ones that can lift up. But even then, unless you're like, uh, I'm thinking way too deep about angles here. I think I might throw up after recording this because, oh my God, this is nasty to recall. I think this is my new, my therapy right here is telling y'all the fucked up shit I've been told because it's entertaining to me. I know someone finds that entertaining. Someone watches true crime shit, right? And that's people talking about fucked up shit. I'm talking about fucked up shit that I've heard or I've done or I've had happen to me or know of happening. Anyway, that was disturbing. That was weird. It wasn't as bad as the pop can. I didn't go home and throw up. When I thought about it more, it made me kind of sick, that grossed out, but it wasn't nearly as bad as the horrifying shit I had been told was the pop can. This boy also had a penchant for using certain uh, language when he would get aggressive. Like, um, you know, I'm not going to use the words because, hey, I'm a white motherfucker if you can't tell. And uh, he loved that N-word. Basically, any racial slur he could think of, he used any kind of Phobic slur. Um, yeah, I've used a homophobic slur. I've said, you know, that before. Now, I wasn't educated. I wasn't, and as what I had grown up hearing, you know, not racial slurs so much. I knew those were bad. I saw people get their ass beat for using them. But, you know, the homophobic, like, hey. Eh. But this guy, I mean, I don't think you can use any kind of derogatory term. When you have 
sex with a pop can. I think you lose your hum- humanity. You lose your right to anything. Like, you know what? Every, all Black Lives Matter, everyone matters, but this motherfucker don't matter, okay? Like, that's what kind of person this was. Like, I'm against the death penalty, but hey, some motherfuckers just are gone. You know what I'm saying? And he was gone. He was just a new level of crazy. You can't handle a sober. You can't. Oh, uh, God, I'm glad I'm done with high school because this kid scared the fuck out of me. Like, very few people cre- scare me. Like, I've met crazy people, you know. I have grew up around some bad motherfuckers. I knew people that killed people. Like, I've known some straight court gangsters. This guy scared me more than all of them combined. I would rather have them hunting me than have this guy know I exist. Because he may not be a serial killer today. But if I see him on the news in 10 years, you know, that he murdered someone, will not surprise me one bit. Honestly, I'm kind of worried about making this podcast. Because of the fact, even though I'm not around that area anymore, people know. I think if you, a couple of people are going to know who I'm talking about. Hopefully they don't hear this. Hopefully a psycho doesn't hear this. Because I feel like he'll know what them. Oh, uh, what the hell? What do I care? But he was a new level of crazy. And the weird shit he would tell me, I don't know how much of it I believe. I don't think he was playing a character. I don't think that kid had the talent to act that good, to pull off that much insanity. I think he was genuinely a psychopath. And he thought that it was cool to, like, tell, yeah, man, I, like, fuck a pop cam, bro. Like, which, he wasn't trying to be funny. Like, yeah, man, you know what I was doing last night? I fucked a birthday cake. Like, there's a way you tell a joke that's that fucked up. You know, I bought a whole new meat of oatmeal cream pie. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can say the fucked up shit. That's funny. But the way he said stuff, he was so dead serious. Like, this was beyond a dry sense of humor. This was California any time in the past five years. You know, it was that dry. Ain't no rain coming. Except for this dude, he was coming on everything according to him. But the way he did... What convinced me he was a psychopath wasn't the crazy shit he would say. Like, the weird. Mike, you know what? Maybe he's just trying to show he's cool. Or he's trying to impress me. Which I don't know why he wanted to impress me, because I was a fucking loser. But, maybe he was trying to show off to me. To make me like him or something. I think he took the first day, I had no interest. But it got him attention, right? Because I paid attention after he said his fucked up shit. It was when he would get angry. And he would say really specific weird shit. Like, specifically saying, oh, I will cut all your skin off and wear it as a suit. Which isn't that crazy. I'm like, but then he talks about grabbing my balls and like tying them to a truck. And I'm like, dude, you don't even own a car, okay? Like... Bitch, be the, he'd be the reason I got a car, bought my cheap ass car before I got my nice one. When I had that cheap ass Toyota Corolla. That's a story for another day, how much of a piece of shit that was. And all the fucked up shit I hid in that car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those are some dark time stories. Maybe I should change the name, man. I know what, I don't know what I did last weekend is awesome, but no, the dark arts, twisted, not shitty, but he told me all this weird shit, and as funny as it is, now that I look back at it, I think for about a year I was genuinely scared he was going to murder me, because he knew, 
I'm pretty sure he knew where I lived at the time. Like, I'm 95% sure he did. Bombirella. He had a family member that was alright. At least I think it was a family member of his. But damn. I probably go. No, I'm not going to say that. not going to say that because he might hear this. And then he'll like crack me down and kill me. I mean, I'll fight a motherfucker all day, but you know, you don't fuck with crazy. I learned that last night after some of the chicks I fucked. You know, some of the stuff, I've met crazy people. I, I, lo- I love crazy people. I, they have a special place in my heart. Crazy people, you know, drug addicts, schizoids, I love them. They're some of the funniest people I've ever met. Drug addicts. Most talented motherfucker I ever met was a heroin addict. This guy was a comedian heroin addict. Tried to be a comedian. Open mic, right? He'd go in. This is a story I heard about him. From someone. They told me a story about this heroin addict. Who came to an open mic. And he would, uh. I'm going to tell you what they told me. Was the set. He'd get up there and you go. Ah, it's hard. It's hard. You know, sometimes, it's hard, man. You know. My friend Jeffrey came to me. And he wanted to borrow some money. And then he would like, he would like pass out. And he'd wake up. And if you could follow what he was saying, it was fucking hilarious. And that motherfucker went and tied his dog to a tree. And he'd go back out. I told him, you make the biscuits, bitch. But I don't owe you motherfuckers nothing. And then Crindy went out there with that goddamn motherfucker. And they were egged. Jamal's car. But I put heroin in my dick. Giant skunk in the sky. I was like. That's not what he said. But he's. I can't remember what my friend told me. But. This guy was fucking hilarious. He would, if you could hear, like, you could start to follow. I'd be like, oh, Jamal. Trinity was, you figure out Trinity was fucking Jamal and Jamal and Trinity, like, left each other. And so she went to egg Jamal's car. And the giant skunk of this guy was weed. That he was hallucinating a giant thing of weed because of, he hit a skunk with Jamal's car. And that's why I was talking about Trinity and Jamal. If they hit a skunk. And so he thought that some... It was... At least that's what I gathered. That whoever was tying his dog to a tree... Didn't actually have a dog. But they wanted to borrow money so they could get a dog. And he didn't want them getting a dog. But they tied to a tree in his yard. And he'd have to deal with said dog. But the guy was funny. That's why I love crazy people. But this guy to this day horrifies me. Armchair fucker, not the heroin guy. Because, oh my god. He was fucking insane. And, I feel like he, he's crazy enough to try to, like, if he, like, found out my name and everything about me, he would track me down and eat me or something. Like, if I disappear after this episode, y'all know who killed me? Armchair fucker back. He got me. That's the way to go right there. Be like, hey, get to have it. Hey, man, what got you? A bus. A bu- I got hit by a bus. What about you? Oh, uh, this armchair fucker back killed me. What the fuck? Oh, uh, this crazy guy. You don't know? Okay, I'll tell you. Okay, that's all I have time for today. But welcome back. This is the I Don't Know What I Did Last Weekend podcast, and we are back, baby.